Hi, I'd like to talk a bit about the expanding universe and the hot Big Bang as it was discovered. And so, uh, if we look at this picture, this is a picture taken with the Hubble Space Telescope of a, um, a, a ultra deep field, and so we can see many galaxies here. And even the very tiny ones here are galaxies. So one thing we notice here is this has a huge three-dimensional aspect to it. Uh, it goes far deep into the universe. And the nearby galaxies tend to be large and bright, and the distant galaxies tend to be faint. And so if we think about that and we look back in time, uh, Vesto Slipper in 1912 made the first uh, discoveries of the evidence for the expanding universe. And the way he did this was at, at the Lowell Observatory in Arizona, uh, he took spectra of galaxies. And so uh, you can take a spectrum and, of a galaxy just like you can take a spectrum of a star where you put the light through a prism and get the rainbow of colors, and we see the lines that correspond to the, uh, uh, the elements and the transitions taking place. And in the, what he found was that all the galaxies that he, he did, or most all of them, had a shift in the positions of the lines, and they were all shifted over to the red end of the spectrum. And by the Doppler effect, this means that these galaxies are all moving away from us. And so what he found was that uh, the further the distance to the galaxy, which you could kind of get an idea just by looking and seeing which uh, galaxies were big and bright and which ones were smaller and faint, uh, and, and the, but the, the, the further ones were moving faster away from us because they, they were shifted further to the red, and the nearby ones were also redshifted, but not as much. And so this was a very interesting and hard to explain result. Edwin Hubble followed up in the 1930s and did this extensively. And uh, uh, we, we now call this Hubble's Law, which shows the distance here in millions of light years, so 200, 400 or 1,000 million light years, and the velocity in kilometers per second. And these are huge velocities. For instance, 10,000 or 20,000 kilometers per second, which is 10 or 20 um, million meters per second. These galaxies, the further they are away, the faster they're moving away from us. And this was difficult to explain, um, but well, we can do it, not uh, with some thought, and that is that the universe is expanding. And so if we can imagine a, a raisin cake kind of model here, and all of the raisins are the galaxies, whereas the cake itself is the whole universe, if the universe gets bigger, uh, the, distances, the distance between the galaxies is increasing. So that means if I'm looking, uh, so suppose that um, this is my home galaxy, the Milky Way, the distance to this galaxy doubled. It went from uh, five centimeters to 10 centimeters in this model. Likewise, this galaxy did the same thing, went from 10 centimeters to 20 centimeters because we can imagine the yeast causing the uh, bread to expand, it um, doesn't, it means that every, every piece, every raisin is increasing its distance away from every other raisin. And if you think about that and the time it takes to go from here, if it's further away to begin with, it must go, this one must go 10 centimeters in this frame, where this one only went five centimeters. So if it's twice as far away, it will be moving twice as fast in this scenario. So we can explain Hubble's law by 
the idea that the universe is expanding and um, uh, people thought about this and George Gamow and Ralph Alpher in 1948 thought about the fact that if we take this to the extreme and run this backwards, uh, we would get a very hot, compressed universe at some time in the be beginning of the expansion, that we run the expansion backwards, we can imagine it getting smaller and then having an expansion from there to the present day, and that in these first uh, minutes of that expansion, the element, uh, the hydrogen and helium uh, fusion was taking place, and so some helium was produced, and the amount of hydrogen and helium, the relative amount, how much helium compared to the amount of hydrogen, Hydrogen is just a proton with a, uh, an electron orbiting it, and helium has two protons and two neutrons with two electrons orbiting around uh, in, in its final form, the helium-4. And so in these reactions, uh, they were able to say that during this very first few minutes, the whole universe was as hot as the center of the sun, and at the center of the sun, hydrogen is being fused into helium, and so for a few minutes, the universe was able to fuse hydrogen into helium, making the helium abundance that we see today. And this was a, 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 an amazing uh, result. And then even possibly more amazing, they were able to predict something in the same result. They predicted the cosmic microwave background radiation. And so I abbreviate that here, CMBR. And that is that when the universe was small and hot, it expanded and has, is still expanding. And that means it, when it will have a colder, much colder temperature today, and that that cold temperature could be measured. And this was predicted and um, found. And Penzias and Wilson in uh, about 1967, using this radio telescope in the United States uh, did not know about the prediction of George Gamow and but we're trying to see if they could measure what kind of signals were coming from the uh, sources in space with this radio telescope and they were able to find out that no matter where they looked in the sky there was a source of light, and that was a very long wavelength radio emission corresponding to black body, uh, a temperature of 2.7 Kelvin as the temperature of empty space. And this was a confirmation of Gamow's prediction. Now, a little bit after that, Subsequent recognition that uh, in the other picture that Hubble had only gone out here, we can see this is a very straight line, but when you go out further and further out into uh, space, into the universe, deeper and deeper at greater distances, we find that at greater redshifts and greater distances, we find that there is, this is not a straight line. And the uh, a meaning for that is that the universe in the past was not is expanding as fast as it is now. So that the universe is expanding faster now than it was in the past. That means it's accelerating. And there uh, was a uh, Nobel Prize given and many, many different people worked on these two projects that were associated with this. So, going back to the cosmic microwave background, we see two lines of, of uh, evidence here. First of all, we have the evidence of, well, really three pieces of evidence. The universe is expanding, galaxies are moving away. There is this cosmic microwave background that was predicted, and we can measure the temperature of the universe is now 2.7 degrees and the nucleosynthesis of the elements during the Big Bang 
was also uh, uh, a, uh, a piece of evidence that showed that the universe was indeed very hot at some point. And this was called the Big Bang. And here are some improvements in the study of the cosmic microwave background. We have uh, 1965, the Penzias and Wilson with the dish horn here that we have. Then they went to space with the COBE satellite showing this kind of map. And uh, the, uh, the W map satellite, that one. And then we can see the Kobe again here. This is much higher resolution. The W map here, and then the Planck, and this is the very most recent one we can see all sorts of detail and structure. We see the same features that we could see here, much more than what Kobe saw uh, in, in the 1990s. And so, what does this mean, and what's the significance of this? Well, in this depicts the universe as it was only 300,000 years after the Big Bang. Something uh, about 13.7 to 8 billion years ago. And the universe did not have any of the galaxies and stars that it has now. But it did have the structure. It did begin to show the structure. So this is the universe as we see it today after uh, 13.8 billion years after the Big Bang. This is the universe as we literally see it with the microwave background radiation because we're seeing that radiation from the time when that, uh, the universe became transparent to light about 300,000 years after the Big Bang. As we look further out into space, we look back into time. So many of these galaxies, uh, or all, or all of these galaxies, they're not the, they, this is the way they were billions of years ago. And the further they are here, the smaller they look, and the further back in time they're looking, uh, we're looking at them. And so we can see galaxies forming and much of the history of the universe in this picture. But here we have a snapshot at 300,000 years after the Big Bang. And so this is the expansion of the universe and the hot Big Bang.